Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Griffin Technology, makers of iPod and iPhone accessories and the very popular iTrip for your iPod. Check them out today at griffintechnology.com. Because I have to change this. the security of this house is not good. Some of the neighbors they have contacted, me. and also they said that it's good that I leave this house. I'm going to another house. Mega Moras, put in a badish me on my don of all stuff. Mammy Sham, Rosano Pass, lost him Charlie Rani. The Cacaso, the hotel gap money, Charlie, the Pass Cabal, Carafico, I must reach a comb. You know, what is going on right now is that we're trying to make uh, the Muslims a new enemy. We think they're not the good guys, but we're the good right, guys. Right. And so I, I think it's really important to tell these kind of stories that like, really appreciate what some of the Muslim people are doing. Yeah. This is Dusty Wright with The Culture Catch, and we're standing at Sundance with the director of a very, very wonderful new documentary, Enemies of Happiness, Miss Eva Mouvel. Americans can sometimes be naive about the politics and how they operate on the ground and you've gotten a very personal story from a, a single point of view about a woman trying to get elected into parliament in a country that's been decimated by war for what, three centuries now? First the Russians and then the drug lords and then the, the American invasion trying to rid uh, the, the, you know, the, evil, the evil lords from the land. Why did you choose that subject? Did you want to impact Americans or all Westerners, was, was there a reason that you went after this story? Was it a story somebody had shared with you? Yeah, I, I, for a long time I, I thought it would be uh, good to tell a story from one of these war zones that were not told in a journalistic way, because uh, what we hear from there is very focused on all of the bad stuff, like the terrorists, the bombs, all the conflicts. And um, and the journalistic way of telling it is sometimes a little bit black and white. And I thought I could have um, the opportunity to tell a story that would um, give us another vision of, of this place. Like, how does to live there? How does it look in the streets? What kind of uh, situation does uh, everyday people have there? And not least, um, I wanted to tell a story full of hope. Like, because what we hear from Afghanistan is, is always so devastating. Right. And there are a lot of strong people there. Uh, local people trying to make a difference in their country, and that's what this film is about. You, the way the movie is shot, it, it, it's, it's a filmic quality. It's not your typical documentary look. It, it seemed guerrilla, but yet it seemed very beautifully shot for documentary. Visuals, especially in documentary, is very important because that's uh, our letters. That's what we use to tell the story. So we are in Afghanistan. We're in a country where we don't know the culture, we don't know the language. And I wanted something that didn't feel trashy. Mm. I wanted people to be drawn into it and, and have the feeling of how it is to be there. And um, also to separate the film from the more... Um, journalistic way of telling mm -hmm. stories. I wanted uh, not to tell to the head, but tell to the stomach, so that you get emotionally engaged. And that is through a lot of the visual things. You get that kind of effect. Now, how did the story come about? How did you migrate into this, into the process, and find Malali? Um, we we heard about her. She's uh, Malali Joy is a very famous character in Afghanistan. Um, but it was difficult to find her, like physically. Yeah, I was she, going to say, uh, she's always in hiding and all. Yeah, she lives undercover and yeah. she doesn't trust people. Like, um, so you need to, to be a little bit, like, work a little bit around that. But uh, I didn't know exactly how her, her everyday life was, but uh, I was very happy that a lot of normal people come to her. She doesn't leave a lot. She has a secure area where soldiers in both ends of the street uh, blocking a whole part of town where she lives and she has her office and people they come to her there because she can't leave uh, mm. and run around town it's too dangerous right. for her but uh, I was surprised to see so many people coming there with social issues and to me that was she's uh, almost like a Mother Teresa figure in some sense 
Yeah. They're, she, they're looking she, for this this push of optimism to help yeah. boost them. Boost. Yeah, it's true. Because uh, in the film, there's, a, for example, a young 13-year-old girl who comes to the office because uh, she has to be married to an right. old man and she doesn't want to do that. She's 80 and, years old. Yeah. دایناال او سلاکو روی خور از دست نت خوری رقم تو بیخر روز بر لاغر میشه داشت خو حداقل می که تو از نواسش کرده خورتر استی یکی امروز چند زن داره آدم تریاکیست در تریاک فروش از خوی کل چی دار تو به من گفتی نی؟ یادم است آره را خور گفتی من نمایو خور خور که که سیو میتارم میخوای بسی دیگر نما, نما سواد نداره این خو سواد داره من هم سنف پنجو خاطر که تریاک ها مری ساب کنه سلا دار تریاک دار مرد که لنگ دستی شل پای شل و مادی تو دختر برم دار خیخ و بدبخت مینه Malala is the only social system there, so they don't have a lot of places to go. And especially in this part of Afghanistan, it's very, very poor. And they have a lot of children living together in these houses, like maybe 10, 15 children together. So they play around a lot and they, they help out their families. Um, it's very difficult to go to school there. there. Some of them does, but it's not all of the children who... They don't have enough uh, space in the school for the children, mm. so they try to, to somehow educate uh, the children. But it's it's uh, they they need a lot of schools, not right. more. But uh, well, children are children. They're playing around with whatever they have, uh, plastic dolls that are mm. totally broken or what. But it doesn't really matter. Right. They're very close to their parents and they live together very closely in the families. Right. For you personally, was that the first time you'd been to that part of the country? Yeah. And what, and what was that like psychically for you, emotionally? Um, we heard a lot about how dangerous it is to work in Afghanistan, especially for people like us who stay for a long time in one place. Mm. It's it's, uh, it's a dangerous thing. You should move fast in and out and stuff like that. But there are a lot of rumors, and it, it is dangerous. And exactly in the town we were, there was a British guy killed three days after we mm. arrived. So it's not it's not just rumors. It's reality. But we were very lucky. We we tried to not be too naive, and we were surrounded by Malala Joya's security people. She has twelve bodyguards taking care of her all the time. So we were kind of part of that security system, and um, we tried to to make our like we had some routines. That Did you we, try to blend in with the people and wear the burqas? Yeah, we wore local stuff yeah. and local clothes, and wore we we had we. Well, only me and another a British cinematographer, also a woman, and then two a uh, local uh, a driver and a, a translator. And that was just, just the four of you. Yeah, that was that was the crew. Well, that's so, remarkable. Yeah, we but that was very good. So we we could like just drive around in a smashed up Afghan car, and when we were outside of Malala Joya's area, we just wore burkas, and then we couldn't be recognized. As a female f uh, f uh, filmmaker, uh, could you share that experience and what it's like, I mean, just starting the process? You know, in some countries, uh, you know, it's tough to get movies made. It seems like women have an easier time making documentaries than they do features. Yeah, yeah. it's like that in Denmark, too. We have a lot of women that make documentary films. And I think it's more compelling, maybe, to us. Uh, the crew is smaller in documentary film. and. Uh, we're good listeners. Women are better mm. listeners than men, so uh, I think it's also has to do with that. Um, to me, it's interest. I'm more interested in documentary than in fiction, and I don't think a lot about the issues about being a woman. I, I I'm brought up uh, equal to men, and uh, I do what I want, and I I don't I don't think about um, having any problems or being treated differently, mm. uh, being a woman. Um, no, not at all. Right.